Hi, this is Wheelie and this is my Super Mario question block. I've already made a video showing you how to crochet the mini GraphGAN question block squares. This is just a quick one to show you how to turn your GraphGAN squares into a cube. So if you haven't yet made your GraphGAN squares, follow this link and make your GraphGAN and then come back here to make the cube. You can either use the GraphGAN for just the one side or you can make four of them like I have. It depends how much you find you enjoy making graph gans. The pattern for the top and the bottom of the cube will also work for any of the sides you decide to leave as solid color. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the solid color squares and then we can sew the block together and stuff it and you'll have your very own super cute and squishy little Super Mario question block. You're going to need a few bits and bobs as well as your graph gan squares. I filmed this when I thought I was going to do just one video for the graph gan and the cube. So I'm showing you white yarn. You're not going to need it. You are going to need some yellow yarn, the same yarn used for your graph gan, and you'll need just a little bit more of that brown yarn as well. Only a tiny bit. You're going to need something to stuff your cube with. And I cut up an old pillow and I've used that to stuff mine. You could also use rags or cotton wool balls if you don't have toy stuffing. You'll need a crochet hook and it should be the same hook you used for your graph gan. I went way overboard with crocheting my graph gan tightly, but because whatever you did for your graph gan you need to do for your sides, I'm sticking with it. You'll need scissors for snipping and you'll need a needle to sew it all together. And I have used a stitch marker to help me find the corners of the squares and you might find one of those useful too. Grab your hook and the yellow yarn and we're going to start by making the solid color sides of the cube. These can be the top, the bottom, the sides, whatever. Start with a slip knot on your hook and make a chain of 16. Here's my little chain. I'm going to work single crochets into it. I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and work into the second chain on the hook from the hook. But turn the chain over because we're going to work into the back of it. Do you see these little bumps here? That's where we're going to work our stitches. Just like with the graph gan, if you're making tight stitches like I am, and I admit I've gone excessively tight, it is going to be fiddly to work this first row. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You've got two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And that's our first single crochet. You need to do 14 more of these. The first chain that we skipped doesn't count as a stitch for this pattern. You need Oh, that, those little red spots on my thumbnail, that's red acrylic paint. I'm making a piranha plant at the moment and I got a little bit messy with the paint. I didn't get it on my clothes, thankfully, but I got it on my table and I got it on my hands and it is not coming off my table and it's apparently not coming off my nail polish either. Anyway, this first row is just single crochet. There's nothing special about it. So pause the video while you do this row and I'll pop back on the last stitch to show you how the rest of the square is worked. The last stitch of row one is just a single crochet, but I like to try to pull this tail through the single crochet as well. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can yarn over and pull them both through at once. But when you're working tight stitches or you're using a small hook, it can get a bit messy. So I tend to do it in two goes. So yarn over and pull through as normal to finish your stitch and then insert your hook back into the stitch and yarn over with the tail and pull it through the stitch as well. And then pull the tail out like that. And now we can work a few stitches of row two over the top of that. So chain one and turn your work and we can start row two. Row two is going to be the same as rows three to 15. That chain one is not gonna count as a stitch. So we put our first stitch into the top of the last stitch in the row below. And we are going to work one single crochet into each of the single crochets in the row below. We'll have 15 stitches by the end of the row. When you finish the row, you chain one and turn to get into the next one. Work a few stitches over the tail before you let it drop and you can finish weaving it in later. So I'll leave you to do this and I'll come back to show you how we put a border on. I have my little swatch of 15 by 15 and I'm going to put a border on it so it'll be easy to join all the sides of our little question block together. 
This is exactly the same border that we put on the mini graph GAN. So to refresh your memory, you chain one and turn. So you're working along the side and between each corner, you need to put 13 single crochets and you work your corners with just three single crochets. So I'll leave you to do that and then to make as many of these plain yellow squares as you need. And then you can unpause when you're ready to join all your squares together. One last thing, when I gave my son the block, he loved it. And then he immediately pointed out that I should have put a little cross in the corner of the top square and the bottom squares, as well as on the question mark squares. So I went back and I sewed those in when I finished. And I promised him that I'd suggest to you guys that you should sew crosses on your yellow squares. So you can do that if you want to. Here's one of my mini graph gans, and I have popped a stitch marker in one corner to help me find my starting point. I'm going to start by joining this question block square to the base. And I've also got all the rest of my squares here ready to go. And I'm using a slightly sharper needle than I usually use to weave in my tails, so I'll be able to sew more easily. I'm going to start by over sewing a couple of times to secure my yarn to the base square. And now I'll take my needle to the other side of the square through this central corner stitch, catching both loops of it. And what I'm basically going to do is whip stitch along the sides of the two squares to join them. So I'm taking my needle into the central stitch of the corner of the question block square, bringing it out to the front side of the square. And then I'll just sew each stitch to the matching stitch on the other square. And if you've got your stitch count slightly out, don't stress, just fudge it a little and it will be fine. And yes, I might just possibly have given myself slightly too much yarn to work with, just slightly. If you don't know how to whip stitch, I'm aware that I haven't given you a good clean visual yet. And that's because I have so much tail to work with at the beginning. So if you keep watching a little bit longer, I'm going to give you a nice clean look at how to whip stitch when I get to working up the sides of the box. So if you're unsure, just watch until you see that before you start your sewing. I've sewn from corner to corner to join the first two squares. And now I'll bring in a second question block square and I'll sew it to the base as well. The yarn is currently coming out of the corner of the base and I'm going to sew it straight to the central corner stitch of the new question block square, catching both loops of the stitch. And I'll take the yarn from the back to the front of the square and that will align the second side, not just with the base, but also with the first side. So now I can whip stitch and join the second side to the base. I've sewn on the second side and I'm just joining the corners up. I've got both loops of that central corner stitch of the base on my needle and I'm now going to sew it to the corner stitch of the third question block square. I'll take the needle from the back of the square to the front and now it's all nicely lined up with the base and with the side so I can whip stitch it to the base. It's time to attach the fourth side. I've come out of the corner of the base and I'm going into the corner of the new side taking the needle from the back to the front of the square and then it's just another whip stitch job. I've got all four of my graph cans attached and now I'm going to begin joining the sides together. You'll find that when you bring your sides up, there is a little bit of a gap where all the corners come together and you need to work a few extra stitches there. So I've joined the base to each of the sides, but I'll also need to join the sides corners to each other. So this corner's already sewn to the corner of the base and I'm going to sew it to the corner of this other graph gan. And I catch both loops of the stitch and I go back into the same corner I started from. And there is still a little bit of a gap there. So I suggest sewing this corner to the base again, but not to the central corner stitch to the stitch that's just next to the corner stitch. And then I take it from there into the other graph gan, again, one stitch away from the center of its corner. And that should have closed the gap nicely. The yarn is having a little bit of trouble going through there. Sometimes it does need a little bit of help. Or a lot of help. So now I can whip stitch my way up the side of the cube and you can really see the whip stitching now that I've got a more sensible length of yarn. The main thing to remember is that you only enter the material from one direction. 
So I'm always going in through one graph GAN and coming out through the other graph GAN. I don't turn my needle and head back down. I'm only taking my needle upward. You need to decide which direction you're going to take the needle and stick with it. I think of it as working in a spiral motion. I'm not sure if that will make sense to you, but it's the way I think of it. I hope that makes it clear. But honestly, if you can't work out the whip stitching, it doesn't matter. Just join the sides together as best you can and it will be fine. I've sewed out that first side so this stitch marker can go. It was just marking the top corner and I forgot to take it out earlier. So it is time to put the top on and pick a corner, any corner, since they're all the same on these yellow squares. That one will do. And I'll just sew these corners together to close up any little gap. Some of the corners will need more work than others and it's just the same as what we did with that bottom corner. That looks like it's done it. And now I can whip stitch and join this up. Okay, embarrassing confession. I just had a camera mishap. I somehow took the camera off video and I put it onto stills and I did a couple of seams before I realized my mistake. It's not a big deal though, as it's all a bit same same with seaming. The specific order you do your seams doesn't matter. You'll have to fasten off at some point as you can't get around the whole cube with one piece of yarn. Over sew on the inside of the cube to fasten off the yarn when you're finished with it and then over sew on the inside of the cube to attach your new bit of yarn. It's a good idea to plan to finish your last seam at the bottom of the cube, not right on top of the cube. So the last spot that you tie off your yarn is as inconspicuous as possible. I've left a little door so that I can get the stuffing in easily and I'm stuffing mine with an old pillow that I cut up. It's surprising how much you actually need to fill these little blocks. Make sure when you're putting the stuffing in, you are spreading it around and making sure you get it right down into the corners. I want mine to be quite puffy. So once you're happy with it, you just need to whip stitch your seams closed and make sure you close up any gaps in that corner. Work your way down the last seam. And close up any gaps in that final corner too. And then bring your needle down into the base. And sew backward and forwards a few times. I'm following the lines of my crochet stitches and that will keep this inconspicuous. Once you've done it a few times, it will be nice and secure and you can bring in the scissors and snip nice and close and you can admire your handiwork. I love this little block. I really hope you like your block too. What do you think? Do you want to make more of these? My son loves this question block and he's been very subtly indicating that he'd like some more of them by showing me all of the many other blocks that are featured in the Super Mario games. He's also rather keen on some of the Minecraft ones. I think the possibilities are endless. Let me know if you've got any great ideas and I will see you next time. Bye.